Hiya, welcome back to Makeup and Metaphors with me, Anya, where today we'll be covering another famous poet and another kind of anti-war poem that will make us reflect on the long-term impact that war has and the human cost of war. So quite a sombre, serious poem, but still excellent. It really makes us think about all of the human costs that war really has. So this is actually the very first poem when you open up the Educast Poetry Anthology for the Year 11 GCSE. And it in some ways might remind you of the Dulce e Decorum S poem by Wilfred Owen that we covered a few weeks ago. So if you wanna watch how I got this look while listening to the context behind that poem, and the poet, then keep on watching. One of the first and main differences between Simon Armitage and the other uh, poets and playwrights and authors that I have covered is that Armitage is actually still alive. So I can't exactly give like an entire timeline of their work or anything like that, because obviously he can still release some of his work. So Armitage is 57, so by no means old. Um, and I think that that's exciting to know that this poetry and this poet is happening right now in our generation, in our world. Sometimes when we go through like Dickens or any of the other authors like Dickinson um, or like Blake, a lot of that is based obviously heavily in the past. And while we're going to be like referencing wars that have taken place in the past today, it's nice to know that a person from this time, from this world has written them and has had our perspective as well as that of the past. So Simon Robert Armitage is 57 years old and he was born in Yorkshire on May 26th, 1963. Not only is he a poet, but he's also a playwright, a novelist. He actually wrote an opera for puppets, which is so random and so brilliant. <laughs> and in 2019, he actually won the Poet Laureate, which is uh, basically a prize for excellence in poetry. Any famous excellent poet has usually won it, if you look back in time. A huge accolade. So while I was doing some research, the most that came up about his youth was about obviously himself and his father Peter. So it seems like a lot of inspiration came from his father Peter, who was formerly an electrician, was then a probation officer, then a firefighter, and he also himself wrote pantomimes. So we can kind of see maybe that's where the love of English and literature and writing was influenced. So Armitage studied geography at university and then went on to get a master's in social work. And then he followed in his dad's footsteps and also became a probation officer. And I kind of like the idea of lots of different jobs. Sometimes when I'm teaching in school, students might think that we just kind of fell into that job directly from secondary school or directly from college, but little do they know that like we've had so many jobs in between and sometimes it takes so long to find out exactly what you want to do or you know you might have to work in order to earn money to then release what you want to do like for all the different jobs that he had he was writing poetry and writing all the while one thing that really i enjoyed reading and and studying or when i was researching armitage as well one thing that i liked was one of my favorite memories from studying english in university was that we read this book called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight or Sir Gawain. I actually have to read it again but it's a brilliant book I really enjoyed it and it was him that released the translation of that book and the main reason that I'm covering him today is obviously because he is the very first poet that students usually encounter as part of the Educast curriculum when they open up their poetry anthology book The Manhunt is the very first poem that they're faced with and usually the first poem that's covered. The Manhunt covers a lot of sensitive topics like on relationships after soldiers have been to war and you know the long-term impact psychologically and physically on um, those survivors who have come back from war and even though they might seem healed on the outside it's the problems with PTSD and on the inside that rage on and Armitage is known for having done quite a few co commemorative pieces and he has spent a lot of time researching with historians and speaking to historians and spending time at war museums in order to I suppose get an act an accurate view and an accurate viewpoint and an accurate representation of what life is actually like on the front lines and in the trenches. A fact about Armitage that I didn't know was that his great uncle, so that would be his father's uncle, had actually um, gotten quite a few medals at war and they were handed down as a family heirloom. And I suppose Simon wanted to know, like, what were these medals for? What would it have been like to achieve such medals? Um, and his great uncle was in the, uh, and his great uncle was in the West Yorkshire Regiment. So I suppose that would have felt very close to him as well, having grown up in Yorkshire. Have people started back in school this week? I started back in school on Thursday. So I've just been in for two days and then we've got a bank holiday on Monday. So it's almost like kind of subtly going back 
into normality again. So as I might have mentioned, Simon himself had never actually been to war, but obviously in his family history, they had been to war seeing as that the medals that existed. And through all the research that he had done through the different projects that he had completed in order to commemorate war and their anniversaries, he would try and portray war in the realist light that he could in the most descriptive way possible. That would make us reflect on the true price of war Obviously when we think of war we think about death and fighting but there's also the pain that's left years after with those with mental suffering, depression, PTSD, fit healthy young men who went to war and then came out completely different people. It stole their youth, it stole their vitality, stole their health, everything. So just getting back to the poem that's in the anthology which is called The Manhunt, we can talk about the double meaning behind the name itself and usually you should kind of start off with thinking about the title of a poem anyway when you're going to analyse it or when you're just going to reflect on it. So The Manhunt, when you think about Manhunt and perhaps not knowing what the poem is about you might think of chase of a criminal that might be on TV, like a manhunt for a serial killer or something along those lines. But there's a double meaning to it. It can mean that, but it also means the search of somebody, searching for the man that used to be at war, the person that people knew before they experienced the traumatizing nature of war and fighting, being constantly on your guard. I can't imagine what it would be like to have to fight for your life every day, constantly look over your shoulder, constantly be on high alert, and then come back to normal life and people just expect you to go right back to the way you were, not hypervigilant. That paranoia will keep you alive at war, but in everyday society might be seen as instability. So this poem was actually written to be from the point of view of a woman, a wife of a soldier, and her name was Laura Beddoes. So she was the one who would read it in a Channel 4 documentary called Forgotten Heroes, The Not Dead. So those who had not died in war, those who had survived, and the impact that surviving war would then have as they went home and as they lived their lives. So it focused on those who had damaged lives, those who were beyond help with their the PTSD and the extreme paranoia, night terrors, all the sorts of awful things that can be as an effect of war. So I think it, it's very impressive that Armitage was able to write from the point of view of a woman whose husband had been to war and who had just returned. I, I think that that's really impressive in itself to have that perspective and the empathy to put himself in that shoes. I know that he did so much research in order to be able to write from the point of view of others. So Laura Beddoes read the poem and it was in reference to her husband, Eddie, who was discharged from the Bosnian peacekeeping missions due to his injuries and depression. And while I'm not going to go into all of the different poetic techniques that Armitage uses, you can find that online, I might do it in a different se um, season, like on a show. I might do it in like a different series where I go into the techniques used in each poem and why, like the effect of them, but this is more focusing on the context of the poem rather than the specific techniques and then the effect of the techniques. But I'll just go into it for a second in that some of the repetition in this poem, like only then, only then did I come close, it just shows the sheer determination that the families and partners of soldiers had to have and to really try to get them back to the somewhere near the person that they used to be. Because once you experience a traumatic event, you change. And obviously war is extremely traumatic and the men that came back from war are different people. The young boys that went off with their baby faces came back gaunt and pessimistic and all life, love, joy gone because they've seen like slaughtering, murder, a side of the human race that nobody should really have to see. Let's dive back into the carnival palette that I used last week. Last week I kind of stuck around this side here so now I'm gonna go over here. Thinking about using this roll, kind of the brown because it's getting a little bit autumnal in the UK now and I am not mad about it because it's been so warm here for so long. Now I would usually put on an eye primer but it's just evaded me today so I'm just going to pop a little bit of concealer on my eyes to make sure that the colour sticks down. I'll just do one eye on camera today and then I'll switch and come back with both of them done. I've, I covered a lot of information there in a short period of time. So again, just to reiterate, it's about the human cost of war and the mental scars that remain after the physical body itself is healed. Just deepening that up a little bit with tan lines. Getting a little bit of fallout on tan lines, but that's because I really took up a lot of product. If you wipe it super lightly after you've powdered, you should be fine. I think that the poem is beautiful. It shows how patient his wife is 
how she's willing to take her time in order to reconnect with her husband. I'm sure that it's so difficult for uh, soldiers who have been to war to have to talk about some of the things that they've been through. It just, I'm sure that it would cause flashbacks that they don't want to do or flashbacks that they don't want to have. They don't want to relive what they've already gone through. Then again, it's not exactly healthy to bury these things down. It's a difficult situation to be in. And I'm going to take a clean brush. It's just a bit stained from colour. Bring that all over to make sure it's all blended. Okay, I'm going to try and use a dark glitter with my finger called Rum, just on the outside and then on the inner corner. So almost like a reverse halo eye. And then I'll pop a different colour in the middle. Right, I'll just go do the other eye and then we'll do liner and lashes. So that's the other eye done. I'm starting to use liquid eyeliner now. Just, I find it way easier than the liner that's in a tub. Uh, so I just like, er, gel liner, sorry. So it's in this little pot. I'm using the Kiko one and just an angled brush. And it just allows me to get right in on my lashes as well. One of the other techniques that Armitage utilises in his poem is that when he refers to the parts of the bodies that have been injured, he uses kind of fragile things or fragile items. So for instance, your lungs is called like the parachute silk and as well the porcelain bones, the rudder of a shoulder blade. And I think that it really serves to remind us that we're not machines. We're not tanks that go off into war and are indestructible. We are human beings that are very easily damaged. And if we're damaged bad enough, off, it will never be repaired fully, will never be repaired properly. We're not just cars that things can just be swapped out and fixed. And one in particular was the injury of the bullet, which was called the, the fetus of metal in his chest. And I think that that imagery really sticks with a lot of pupils because we can talk about it and it really causes them to think and reflect like a fetus being a, a baby which develops and gets bigger and bigger, just like an injury left untreated can get bigger and bigger and worse and worse. So I'm sure that I've chucked the poem up on screen at some point during this video. But here are just some of my favourite quotes that I've been talking about that I'll just pop on the screen right now while I finish this. And like I said, one of the most interesting things that I find about Armitage is that he is alive today. This isn't just some poet that was way in the past that we're trying to analyse and understand. This is someone that is writing right now, that is a poet right now in today's society. And we should support British poets. And I hope that this will inspire you to maybe look into more of his work or more of his life or more poetry in general. Um, I know that it can be kind of similar to what we did with Wilfred Owen and Jultier de Cormes. So I'll pop that video up here if you want to just have a little look at it. Another kind of anti-war poem, but from a completely different time and a different perspective. I hope that you learned something from today's video. I'm not sure if you would enjoy it because it's quite a sombre, serious poem that we were talking about, just the kind of context behind the manhunt. But I find it extremely interesting. I hope you did too. I hope that it helps you revise if you're doing the poetry anthology for Educast for the GCSE. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to follow me, please go over to my Instagram. It's uh, makeup underscore and underscore metaphors. Hit subscribe if you want to see more revision videos or you want to know a little bit more about poetry or if you want to know some of the context behind some of our most famous poets today and in the past. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye.